Simon Keating is this sweet young guy from Ireland who became one of the biggest boy band stars in the world. The thought of sitting there with Pierce under the microscope, it's quite intimidating. Right now, I think he's decided to finally come clean about all the stuff we've read about in the headlines. But he's going to ask me, joining Boys Own, leaving Boys Own, Louis Walsh. The tragically early death of his mother, then of course the death of his bandmate, Stephen Gately, an affair which came out in the newspapers. There's things tonight that, you know, I'll say that have never been heard before. I mean, Ronan Keating doesn't do this kind of interview. This is probably the most nervous I've ever been going into an interview. If I was him, I'd be nervous. Are these chairs supposed to be this uncomfortable? <laughs> <laughs> How are you feeling? Now I feel great. Now I feel confident. I feel like I'm, I'm moving forward. But over the last few years, it hasn't obviously felt that good. We'll come to what was going on in your life a little later, but in a survey in 2003, you were listed as the musical artist that people most like to listen to while making love. <laughs> <laughs> OK, OK. I like that one. Do you actually like the idea of people having sex to your music? Absolutely. Do you <laughs> Absolutely. Have you ever done? Never. No, never. never. Yes, you have. No, I have not. Oh, I can imagine. <laughs> I don't... I don't... You're when just, you were, uh, even when you were, like, dating, you know, the lights no. go down, the candles come never. out... Never. Mortified. Uh, Are you crazy? No way. <laughs> let me... Let me no. play you my new singer. <laughs> <laughs> no, not gonna happen. The thoughts of the other lads singing in the background, it was never gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> no way. No. Now, when Boys Zone were at the height of their fame, the fan club had 28,000 members, and you personally got the most fan mail, 2,000 fan letters a week. Wow. What was the weirdest thing fans ever sent you? I remember, which a bit weird and sick, was pubic hair. <laughs> and, yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, seriously? Yeah. yeah, seriously. Sellotaped into cards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not cool. Did you ever reply to those? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> right. OK. <laughs> now, some of your fans are so fanatical and found out where you live that your mother didn't help matters cos she used to invite them in. Yeah. Come in, see his bedroom. She did. She felt sorry for them. It was cold outside. It was Dublin. It was always raining. <laughs> and she'd bring them inside, yes, show them a bedroom, taking photos. I remember actually seeing... It was a fanzine magazine or something. There was a photograph of my bedroom in the fanzine. And I was looking at going, how the hell did they get a photo of my bedroom? <laughs> I remember going home and saying, Mom, I can't believe that. And she goes, oh, yeah. <laughs> I might have left them into your room to take a photo. <laughs> Did you yeah. ban her from doing that? Yeah, and yeah, I said, oh, please, ma'am, don't. <laughs> she wouldn't listen to you. It's all good. Well, now, let's take a look at how you became one of the biggest singing stars of the last 20 years. Ronan Keating, the Irish clean-cut superstar who captured the hearts of millions of fans. Girls love him. Their mums love him. Probably their gran loves him. He has that charisma. He has the charm. He loves to sing. He loves music. He's a solo artist. It's only and the lead singer of one of Ireland's biggest musical exports. Boyzone paved the way for everybody who's come after them in pop music from Ireland. They were Ireland's first big pop band. There's no doubt about that. They were massive. <laughs> Ronan got his break 19 years ago when he was discovered by a well-known pop supremo. This is the famous Louis Walsh that you hear so much about. He was putting together Ireland's biggest boy band. These lads have decided they are going to be Ireland's answer to take that. Within 24 hours of being signed up, Ronan and his fellow bandmates were asked to perform on Ireland's primetime entertainment programme, The Late Late Show. I'm sure that if there was one bit of footage that they could buy and destroy, it would be that. The whole country pissed their pants laughing. An hour before we went on, the host of the show said he wants us to do something. Sure, we didn't even know each other. You couldn't believe these guys in dungarees with their tops off were dancing. They weren't even singing. 
It was literally like Louis had gone, guys, just dance like maniacs. We need to get you noticed. <laughs> that footage is just pure gold. Thank you very much. Well done. Goodbye, Richard. Yeah. Goodbye. Who would have guessed that they could become such a phenomenon? We look forward to hearing from you when you're famous. A year later, they got their first Irish number one. And along with it, an adoring female fan base. The reaction they got was incredible. And this was instant, virtually overnight. Up to 300 screaming girls maintained their vigil at the RTE television centre for over three hours. It reminded me of years ago when the Beatles would do live gigs and the vans would get rocked. There was that level of hysteria, especially for Ronan and especially for Steve. Ronan, Keith, Stephen, Mikey and Shane became the best of friends, but it was the group's two lead singers, Ronan and Stephen, who had the closest bond. Ron and Steve were close. I know their relationship, they would have shared a lot of intimate things. They were always giggling and laughing. There was a special bond between them. The smile on your face lets me know that you need me. After more than five years as Boyzone frontman, Ronan received a call from director Richard Curtis. He asked him to sing the theme tune on his latest film. He released a cover of a huge American country song. I remember hearing that song and thinking, oh my God, he's done a song for Notting Hill. It just all made sense, you know? It just all fell into place. From that point on, he was no longer Ronan Keating from Boyzone. He was just Ronan. Ronan's next single cemented his status as a solo star. This had number one stamped all over. It absolutely proved that he was going to be able to have a succession of big hits. But that video will still go down as one of the stupidest videos ever. Just him floating around those trees, it's like, like seriously, Ronan, hey, you're 27. You shouldn't be floating around in trees at 27. Whilst Ronan's career took off, Boyzone split. The fact that he suddenly had this massive solo hit did cause a bit of tension amongst them all. And then it kind of transpired that Ronan had broken up boys on the but that really wasn't the case. If there had been if everyone's been honest, everyone wanted a break. Everyone had just had enough of, of, of it all, just the madness of it all. In 2007, the news came that all the fans had been waiting for. Boys on our back. I remember the mall hitting the gym at the same time to tour again. I know they were all excited about that. Then all got super buffed up. I was kind of a bit jealous. Two singles later, they were still going strong. But while the band were taking a break from recording an album, Ronan received an unexpected phone call. We were in a restaurant, and the next thing, he, I just saw him on the phone. He went, what? 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 And he pushed his chair back. And he looked at me, and I knew something was seriously wrong. Boys own fly out to Mallorca after the sudden death of Stephen Gately. At the age of just 33, Stephen had been found dead at his holiday home in Spain. They hit roll real hard, real hard. A week later, on the 17th of October 2009, Ronan and the rest of his bandmates said an emotional farewell to their dear friend. It's with a heavy heart and great sadness that I say that the world has lost one of its brightest stars. We have lost our brother, and I have lost my wingman. <sighs> It'll never be the same without him. Take me back to when you got the call. Who called you? Uh, a lawyer called uh, Gerald Keane. The phone rang, and, and uh, Gerald said that uh, Ronan, I'm sorry, but I've, I have some bad news. Um, Stephen's passed away. So straight away, I started going through all the different Stevens in my head, thinking, Stephen who? And I think I said, Stephen who? And he said, Stephen Gately. The first thing I did was call Andrew, Stephen's husband, and asked him, was it true? Please tell me it's not true. And Andrew started crying and said, sorry, Ro, it is. Then I called the guys. And you broke the news to all of them? Yeah, one by one, and, and gave them the news. And, and that was, 
That was really hard. Really hard. Why was it so important for you guys to, to get to Spain? We didn't understand what was going on, but we knew we needed to be near steel. So we, we got on a flight and we flew down and, and uh, we met with Andrew and, and uh, we spent you know, the night talking, really, and, and trying to understand what was going on and what happened. And that must have been so hard. It was all so hard. I mean, honestly, me, you see, getting to Spain, meeting Andrew, flying back to Dublin, meeting the parents, and then being asked to organise the funeral and put it together for our friend. Our brother was, it was hard. It was everything we had to do from, from the songs that we thought he would like to hear to finding the words in the eulogy that would be fitting enough. And you know, there was times, I remember sitting on the plane with the guys and we were, we were, we were I, was, I was jotting down things for the eulogy and I was shouting things across the plane at the lads. And we had some stories, we were laughing. And then somebody would say something and you'd just have tears streaming down your face, all of us sitting there. Um, you spent the night before the funeral in the church with Stephen's coffin, all of you. Yeah. It was amazing. It was an amazing experience for us. Stephen's mom said she didn't want Stephen on his own in the church. So we all said, no brainer. We're all staying in the church tonight. So we got a bunch of sleeping bags and we literally lay on the floor next to Theo. And we laughed and cried all night. And It was, it was our, it was our last night together. So, uh, he had so much to give. So full of life and so full of love. And all the things I knew he wanted to do in life. You know, something as simple as, he was a big Disney fan and he wanted to see, I think it was called The Princess and the Pea, I think it was called. And he couldn't wait. He was telling me all about this new cartoon that was coming out and he couldn't wait to see it. And I remember sitting watching it with my daughters. Thinking that. It was hard. What kind of man was he, Steve? He was a creature that needed love. He needed to feel loved. And, and, and you know, when, he went through some difficult times in his life. When he came out, I mean, that was a huge step. And his bravery was unbelievable. Because you guys had known from the start that he yeah. was gay. Yes. So you'd always known. He'd never yeah. kept it secret to no, you. No, not with us, no. But all of you, as the band exploded, you must have all been aware of this ticking time bomb we, we on never, Stephen. We never, we never felt it was a ticking time bomb. Stephen was, was scared. Did he feel that? Yeah, he was worried. He was worried that we would lose fans because of that. And it was the total opposite when he came out. But he did. I mean, there was friends of his that didn't know. I mean, you know, telling his mom and dad, all of those things that he had to do because of this issue, this situation that, you know, uh, the newspapers had found out, they were going to, you know, break the story. So they came to him and said, would you like to tell it your way? Which did was... Did you feel it was, looking back on it, may have precipitated a happier phase in his life? You should never be pressurised into doing something like that. You do it at your own time, your own choice. It was heartbreaking for Steele. I saw what happened. I saw the pain he went through. And nobody deserves that. You have to be ruthless in that moment. I was. I don't regret going on to do what I did, but I do reg I regret the way it was handled. <laughs>